The Pyramid of Nefurukar In ancient Egyptian the Ba of Nefurukar was built for the 5th dynasty Pharaoh Nefurukar Kakai, referred to as Nefurukar, in the 25th century BC. A it was the tallest structure located on the highest site at the necropolis site of Abusir, found between Giza and Saqqara, and still towers over the necropolis today. The pyramid is also significant because its evacuation led to the discovery of the Abusir papyri. The 5th dynasty marked the end of the Great Pyramid constructions during the Old Kingdom. Pyramids of the era were smaller and becoming more standardized, though intricate relief decoration also proliferated. Nefurukar's pyramid deviated from convention as it was originally built as a step pyramid a design that had been antiquated after the 3rd dynasty 26th or 27th century BC. B. This was then encased in a second step pyramid with alterations intended to convert it into a true pyramid, see however, the pharaoh's death left the work to be completed by his successors. The remaining works were completed in haste, using cheaper building material. Because of the circumstances, Nefurukar's monument lacked several of the basic elements of a pyramid complex a valley temple, a causeway, and a cult pyramid. Instead, whereas cult priests would normally have lived in a pyramid town near to the valley temple, these elements were replaced with a small settlement of mud brick houses south of the monument, from which the priests could conduct daily activities. The discovery of the Abusir papyri in the 1890s is owed to these conditions. Under normal circumstances, the papyrus archives would have been contained in the pyramid town and their destruction would have been assured. The pyramid became part of a greater family cemetery. The monuments to Nefurukar's consort, Kent Kastu, and his sons, Neferfer and Userini, are found in the surrounds of the monument. Though their construction began under different rulers, all four of these monuments were completed during the reign of Nusur. Location and Excavation The Pyramid of Nefurukar is situated on the necropolis at Abusir between Saqqara and the Giza Plateau. Abusir assumed great import in the 5th dynasty after Yuzurkov, the first ruler, built his son temple and, his successor, Sahur inaugurated a royal necropolis there with his funerary monument. Sahur's successor, his son Nefurukar, was the second ruler to be entombed in the necropolis. The Egyptologist Yaromir Krejci proposes a number of hypotheses for the position of Nefurukar's complex in relation to Sahur's complex one that Nefurukar was motivated to distance himself from Sahur and thus chose to found a new cemetery and redesign the mortuary temple plan to differentiate it from Sahur's, to that geomorphological pressures, particularly the slope between Nefurukar's and Sahur's complexes, required Nefurukar to situate his complex elsewhere. 3. On the basis of the site being the highest point, Nefurukar may have selected it to ensure his complex dominated the surrounding area and, 4. That the site may have been intentionally selected to build a pyramid in line with Heliopolis. D. The Abusir diagonal is a figurative line connecting the northwest corners of the pyramids of Nefurukar, Sohar, and Neferfer. It is similar to the Giza axis, which connects the southeast corners of the Giza pyramids, and converges with the Abusir diagonal to a point in Heliopolis. The location of the complex impacted the construction process. The Egyptologist Miroslav Barta states that one of the major factors influencing the location was their position in relation to the administrative capitale of the Old Kingdom, in Buhej known today as Memphis. Providing that the location of ancient Memphis is accurately known, the Abusir necropolis would have been no further than 4 km 2.5 miles from the city center. The benefit of the site being close to the city was the increased access to resources and manpower. Southwest of Abusir, workers could exploit a limestone quarry to gather resources for the manufacture of masonry blocks used in the construction of the pyramid. The limestone there was particularly easy to quarry considering that gravel, sand and tuffle layers sandwiched the limestone into thin segments of between 0.60 meters 2.0 feet and 0.80 meters 2 feet 7 in thick making it easier to dislodge from its matrix. In 1838, the British Egyptologist John Shapering cleared the entrances to the pyramids of Sohar. Nefurukar, and Nusur. Five years later, the Prussian Egyptologist Richard Lepsius explored the Abusir necropolis and catalogued Nefurukar's pyramid as 21. It was Lepsius who proposed the theory that the accretion layer method of construction was applied to the pyramids of the 5th and 6th dynasty. One important development was the discovery of the Abusir papyri, found in the temple of Nefurukar during illicit excavations in 1893. In 1902-8, the German Egyptologist Ludwig Burchard, Working for the Deutsche Orient Gesellschaft or German Oriental Society, reserved those same pyramids and had their adjoining temples and causeways excavated. His findings were published in Das Grab Denkmal des Königs Nefer Re 1909. The Czech Institute of Egyptology has had a long term excavation project going at the site since the 1960s. 
Mortuary complex layout pyramid construction techniques underwent a transition in the 5th dynasty. The monumentality of the pyramids diminished, the design of mortuary temples changed, and the substructure of the pyramid became standardized. By contrast, relief decoration proliferated and the temples were enriched with greater storeroom complexes. These two conceptual changes had developed by the time of Seher's reign at the latest. Seher's mortuary complex indicates that symbolic expression through decoration became favored over sheer magnitude. For example, 4th dynasty pharaoh Khufu's complex had a total of 100 linear meters 330 linear feet reserved for decoration, while Seher's temple had around 370 linear meters 1200 linear feet dedicated to relief decorations. Barda identifies that storage space in mortuary temples expanded consistently from Neferukar's reign onwards. This was a result of the combined centralization of administrative focus onto the funerary cult, the increase in the numbers of priests and officials involved in the maintenance of the cult, and the increase in their revenues. The discovery of considerable remains of stone vessels, mostly broken or otherwise incomplete, in the pyramid temples of Sohar, Neferukar, and Nefer bears testament to this development. Old Kingdom mortuary complexes consisted of five essential components one a valley temple, two a causeway, three a pyramid, or mortuary, temple, four a cult, or satellite, pyramid, and five the main pyramid. Neferukar's mortuary complex only had two of these basic elements a mortuary temple which had been hastily constructed from cheap mud brick and wood, and the largest main pyramid at the site. The valley temple and causeway that were originally intended for Neferukar's monument were co-opted by an user for his own mortuary complex. Conversely, a cult pyramid never entered construction, though this was a consequence of the rush to complete the monument upon Neferukar's death. Its replacement was a small settlement and lodgings constructed from mud brick to the south of the complex where the priests would live. An enormous brick enclosure wall was built around the perimeter of the pyramid and mortuary temple to complete Neferukar's funerary monument. Main Pyramid The monument was intended as a step pyramid, an unusual choice for a 5th dynasty king, given that the era of step pyramids ended with the 3rd dynasty 26th or 27th century BC centuries prior, depending on the scholar and source. The reasoning behind this choice is not understood. The Egyptologist Miroslav Werner considers a speculative connection between the Turin canons listing him as the founder of a new dynasty I and the original project though he also considers the possibility of religious reasons and power politics as well. The first build contained six carefully laid steps high quality stone blocks reaching a height of 52 meters 171 feet, 99 chu. A white limestone casing was to be applied to the structure, but after minimal work on this was completed, extending only to the first step, the pyramid was redesigned to form a true pyramid. Werner describes the architecture of a fifth dynasty pyramid thusly. The outer face of the first step of the pyramid core was formed by a frame made of huge blocks of dark grey limestone up to 5 meters long and well bound together. Similarly, there was an inner frame built of smaller blocks, and making up the walls of the rectangular trench destined for the underground chambers of the tomb. Between the two frames pieces of poor quality limestone had been packed, sometimes dry and sometimes stuck together with clay mortar and sand, the core was indeed modeled into steps but these were built in horizontal layers and only the stone blocks making up the outer surface were of high quality and well joined together. The inner part of the core was filled up with only partially joined rough stones of varying quality and size. To convert the step into a genuine pyramid, the whole structure was extended outwards by about 10 meters 33 feet, 19 chu and raised a further two steps in height. This expansion project was completed in rough order with small stone fragments that were intended to be cased in red granite. The premature death of the king halted the project after only the lowest levels of the casing had been completed. The resultant base of the structure measured 105 meters 344 feet, 200 chu on each side, and, had the project been completed, the pyramid would have reached approximately 72 meters 236 feet, 137 cubic inches height with an inclination from base to tip of about 54 degrees. Despite the incompleteness of the structure, the pyramid, which is of comparable size to Menkaur's pyramid at Giza, dominates over its surrounds as a result of the position of its site standing on a hill some 33 meters 108 feet above the Nile Delta. Substructure The descending corner near the middle of the north face of the pyramid serves as the entry into the substructure of Neferukar's pyramid. The corridor begins approximately 2 meters 6 feet 7 and above ground level and ends at a similar depth below ground level. It has proportions of 1.87 meters 6 feet 2 in height and 1.27 meters 4 feet 2 in width. It is reinforced at the entrance and exit points with granite casing. 
The corridor breaks out into a vestibule leading to a longer corridor that is guarded by a portcullis. This second corridor has two turns, but maintains a generally eastward direction and ends in an antechamber that is offset from the burial chamber. The roof of the corridor is unique. The flat roof has a second gabled roof made of limestone on top of it which itself has a third roof made from a layer of reeds. The burial and antechamber's ceilings were constructed with three gabled layers of limestone. The beams disperse weight from the superstructure onto either side of the passageway, preventing collapse. Thieves have ransacked the chambers of its limestone making it impossible to properly reconstruct, though some details can still be discerned. Namely, that one both rooms were oriented along an east-west axis, two both chambers were the same width, the antechamber was shorter of the two, three both chambers had the same style roof, and are missing one layer of limestone, and four the burial chamber had dimensions 12.6 meters times 3.15 meters 41 feet 4 and times 10 feet 4 inches. Overall, the substructure is badly damaged the collapse of a layer of the limestone beams has covered the burial chamber. No trace of the mummy, sarcophagus, or any burial equipment has been found inside. The severity of the damage to the substructure prevents further excavation. Mortuary Temple The Mortuary Temple is located at the base of the pyramid's eastern face. It is larger than is typical for the period. Archaeological evidence suggests that it was unfinished at Neferukar's death, and was completed by Neferfren Nusser. For example, while the inner temple and statue niches were built from stone, much of the rest of the temple, including the court and entrance hall, was apparently hastily completed using cheap mud brick and wood. This left large portions of the mortuary temple susceptible to erosion from rain and wind, where stone would have given it significant durability. The site was less aesthetically impressive, although its basic layout and features remained roughly analogous to Seher's temple. Its enlarged size can be attributed to a design decision to build the complex without a valley temple or a causeway. Instead, the causeway and temple, whose foundations had been constructed, were diverted to Nusser's complex. The temple was entered through the columned portico, and columned entrance hall which terminates into a large columned courtyard. The columns of the hall and courtyard are made from wood arranged into the form of lotus stalks and bud sea image right. The courtyard is adorned with 37 such columns, these columns are asymmetrically positioned. The archaeologist Herbert Rick hypothesized that columns near the altar may have been damaged by fire and removed. A papyrus fragment from the temple archives corroborates this story. A low-stepped ramp in the courtyard's west leads to a transverse north-south corridor which leads south into storerooms and north into another smaller corridor containing six wooden columns through which the open courtyard of the main pyramid can be accessed. It is in the southern storerooms that the Abusir papyri were discovered by grave robbers in the 1890s. Beyond the storerooms is a gate which has another access point to the main pyramid's courtyard and through which a second excavated southwestern gate leads to Kentgis 2s complex. Finally, traversing across the corridor leads directly into the inner sanctuary or temple. The surviving reliefs are fragmentary. Of the preserved materials, one particular block stands out as vitally important in reconstructing the genealogy of the royal family at this time. A limestone block, discovered in the 1930s by Egyptologist Edouard Ghazuli, depicts Neferikar with his consort, Kentgis II, and eldest son. It was not found at the site of the pyramid, but as a part of a house in the village of Abusir. The Abusir papyri document details concerning Neferukar's mortuary temple at Abusir. One testimony from the papyri is that five statues were housed in the niches of the central chapel. The central statue depicted Neferukar as the deity Osiris, whereas the two outermost statues portrayed him as the king of Upper and Lower Egypt respectively. The papyri also record the existence of at least four funerary boats at Abusir. Two boats are located in sealed rooms while the other two are to the north and south of the pyramid itself. The southern boat was discovered when Werner unearthed the funerary boat during excavations. Valley Temple, Causeway and Cult Pyramid Only the foundations of the Valley Temple and Causeway intended for Neferukar's complex had been laid at the time of his death. The Causeway's foundation had been laid about two-thirds of the way from the Valley Temple to the Mortuary Temple. As a result, when Usur took over the site, the causeway had to be diverted from its original destination, so that it travels in one direction for more than half its distance before bending to another for the remainder of its length. The precise function of the satellite pyramid remains unclear, though it may have had some association with the Ka of the Pharaoh. Neferikar's monument has no cult pyramid. Rather, the cult pyramid was replaced with a small settlement, called Bakakaik, of mud brick lodgings for priests, south of the monument. The omission of these essential elements have themselves had one significant impact. 
Under normal circumstances, the priests tending to the deceased pharaoh's funerary cult would have lived in a pyramid town built in the vicinity of the valley temple situated on the Abusir Lake. Naturally, the daily administrative records kept by the priests would have had their residence with the priests. Instead, as a matter of circumstance, these documents were instead kept in the mortuary temple. This fact preserved the existence of their archives which would have otherwise long ago disintegrated, buried under the mud. The presence of the settlement near to the complex sites also allowed small restoration and architectural works to be conducted. Later history Nusser was the last king to build his funerary monument at Abusir. His successors Ben Kauhor and Shkarisasi abandoned the site in favor of sites elsewhere. Abusir thus ceased to be the royal necropolis. This did not mean that the site had been abandoned. The records of the Abusir papyri demonstrate that funerary cults remained active at Abusir at least until the reign of Pepi II at the end of the 6th dynasty. Werner believes that royal cultic activities ceased by the first intermediate period. Another Egyptologist, Yaromir Malik, notes that some limited evidence for the continuation of the cults of Neferukar and Nusser exists throughout the Heracleopolitan period, though this means that Nusser's cult operated continually until at least the 12th dynasty. Professor Antonio Morels believes that funerary cults may have continued beyond the Old Kingdom, in particular the cult of Nusser appears to have survived both in its official form and in popular public veneration until the early Middle Kingdom, and some scant evidence in the form of two statues dated to the Middle Kingdom may suggest that Neferukar's cult was active during that period as well. The necropoli near Memphis, specifically those at Saqqara and Abusir, were used extensively during the 26th dynasty ca. 664 to 525 BC. Considerable quantities of stone were required for these tombs which very probably came from the Old Kingdom pyramids, causing further damage to them. Graves estimated to be from the 5th century BC have been discovered in the vicinity of Neferukar's mortuary temple. One yellow calcite gravestone, discovered by Burchard, bears an Aramaic inscription belonging to NSNW, the daughter of Panam alternatively read as belonging to Neznu, the daughter of Tapaknam. A second inscription, Found by Werner on a limestone block in the mortuary temple bears the inscription Manukin and son of Siwa. The dating of this second inscription is uncertain, but may plausibly be from the same period. Family Cemetery Pyramid of Kent Kaus II Main article Pyramid of Kent Kaus II Originally thought to be a mastaba by Burchard, the ruined structure found on the southern side of Neferukar's complex was considered to be of, at most, secondary importance. In consequence, Burchard neglected to properly examine it beyond conducting a brief survey of the site while there. It was not until Werner's Czech team's excavations in the 1970s that the structure was identified as being the pyramid tomb of Neferukar's consort, Kent Kus II. Pering had previously discovered griffinage on a limestone block from the site of Neferukar's tomb which attested to his consort the king's wife Kent Kaus. Further corroborating evidence is her appearance in a relief of the royal family found on another limestone block on which Neferukar's son, Neferfer, also appears. Her pyramid was constructed in two phases. The first phase of the construction must have begun during Neferukar's reign, as is evidenced by the inscription that Pering had discovered. The project was halted around the tenth year of Neferukar's reign, but later resumed until the complex was completed. Werner suggests that Neferukar's untimely death interrupted the project and that it was ultimately finished during Nusser's reign. The word mother appears inscribed above wife on another block indicating that the relationship between Kentkus II and Nusser was as mother and son. The completed structure has a square base measuring 25 meters 82 feet, 48 chu across each side, and with a slope of 52 degrees would stand 17 meters 56 feet. 32 Chu tall were it not in ruins. Her mortuary complex also includes a satellite pyramid, a courtyard, and an extended mortuary temple. Unfinished Pyramid Neferfer Main article Pyramid of Neferfer Located directly southwest of Neferukar's monument, and just to the west of Kentkus II's, Neferfer's unfinished pyramid is another member of the family cemetery born around Neferukar's tomb. Built on the Abusir diagonal, Neferfer's pyramid was never completed owing to the unexpectedly early death of the pharaoh. M originally built with a base length of 65 meters 213 feet, 124 chu, slightly shorter than that of Seher's pyramid, and with only a single step completed, the plan had to be altered to accommodate the remains of the king. For this reason, the pyramid was hastily converted into a squared mastab and completed with the application of limestone facing at a slope of 78 degrees and a clay and desert stone capping. The accompanying mortuary temple is believed to have been built promptly following Neferfer's death. The main features of the temple were a high post tile hall, two large wooden boats, and a number of broken statues found in rooms near the aforementioned hall. 
Newser's pyramid. Newser joined his family with his own mortuary complex. Upon taking the throne, Newser undertook to complete the three unfinished monuments of his closest family members his father, Neferurkar, his mother, Kentkas II, and his brother, Neferfer. This task, and its costs, burdened the construction of his own monument. The location of Newser's mortuary complex is itself unusual. Instead of being seated on the Abusir Heliopolis axis, Newser's pyramid is nestled between Neferurkar's and Seher's pyramids. For Newser's pyramid to be placed on the axis it would have needed to be located in the desert, far from the Nile Valley. The costs of such a project were unreasonable. The pyramid, located to the northeast of Neferurkar's pyramid, stands around 52 meters 171 feet, 99 chu tall and has a base length of about 79 meters 259 feet. 151 Chu The causeway that connects the valley temple to the mortuary complex was originally destined for Neferukar's pyramid, but Nusir had the causeway diverted, and the valley temple co-opted, to serve his monument. Abusir Papyri The monument's significance comes from the circumstances of its construction, and the contents of the Abusir Papyri archives. The French Egyptologist Nicolas Grimal states that this was the most important known collection of papyri from the Old Kingdom until the 1982 expedition of the Egyptological Institute of the University of Prague discovered an even richer cache in a storeroom of the nearby mortuary temple of Neferfer. The first fragments of the Abusir papyri were discovered by illicit diggers in 1893, and sold and distributed around the world in the antiquities market. Later, Burchard discovered additional fragments while excavating in the same area. The fragments were found to be written in hieratic, a cursive form of hieroglyphics. Other papyri found in Neferukar's tomb were comprehensively studied and published by the French Egyptologist Paul Posener Krieger. The papyri records span the period between the reign of Jkarisasi through to the reign of Pepi II. They recount all aspects of the management of the funerary cult of the king including the daily activities of priests, lists of offerings, letters, and inventory checks of the temple. Importantly, the papyri connect the larger picture of the interplay between the mortuary temple, sun temple and other institutions. For example, the fragmentary evidence of the papyri indicates that goods for Neferukar's funerary cult were transported by ship to the pyramid complex of the king. The full extent of the records of the papyri found at Abusir is unknown as more recent findings remain unpublished.